Thank for, you. Yes, but we use it. So for Thank those you. who don't know yet. Sheldon. But my question is, I run um, a youth-driven platform. I engage a lot of youth in my line of work. And mo most of the times when you speak to them or you go to the grounds and you're having conversations with them, and you make mention, oh, the government has created 2.6 million jobs, and they go like, it is not reflecting. We do not have jobs. And that is like general atmosphere amongst most of the youth out there. Either they have been employed and they are being paid paltry sums of money, their, salary, their salaries are not being paid on time, or they have not been paid at all. So just standing here and telling us that you have created 2.6 million or 2.3 million jobs is not enough for us. We want to see the tangibles. We want to be employable. We don't want to be employment statistic at the end of the day. So I want to know what your government is going to do to expand the various sectors of production so that we can absorb all these people into the system and they get paid well. On the other side of things too, um, there is this video that was posted by um, Honorable Kojo Pong Kroma, where in the video it was asserted that you have trained one million youth in coding. I want to understand. I know training and actual employment be two different things. When you train someone and the person doesn't have a job, it doesn't qualify to be called employment. So these people that you want to train, we will train, we will train. Is there a job market for them to be absorbing so that it wouldn't just be training? Because when you train and there is no job, then there is no point. Also, thank you. Thank you. Doc, 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 my bad, my bad, doc. <laughs> so doc, I am, I am a young entrepreneur. I started a new media after school, after not getting a um, job anywhere. Now, I have made it, um, I have put in the effort to bring in national service people to work with me, right? And all, every year, we take in about two, three national service people. I'm a private company. I'm not a government company. Now, I'm supposed to pay these, uh, you know, national service people a certain amount of money, which is uh, more than the, what the government is paying. And after that, I am supposed to pay money to the government through the National um, you know, Service Secretariat. For a private startup company like mine, that is not funded by anyone, and I am paying all these amount of money to the government. What are you know, the benefits, the opportunities for me in your government so that I can create a fertile grounds to absorb in a lot more people so that I can work with them and create employment for them? Thank you very much, uh, There, I think there are about three questions, if, if I recall. You, you made the right point to start with. That says that we've created 2.6 million jobs. But for people you talk to, um, they are not seeing it, reflecting. And that's exactly the point I made. That, in fact, even though we've created 2.6 million jobs, it's not sufficient. The demand for employment is very high, you know, but you can just imagine that if you had not created this 2.6 million, the demand would have even, even been higher, right? So the fact is that it's true. We haven't, we haven't done enough in that sense that you, you want to do more. And this is why I believe if you look at the program I'm putting forward, um, it's very, very key, the business side. You, you know, you look at the tax reforms that we are proposing uh, that will help stimulate the private sector. Uh, I'm talking about people who have issues with tax liabilities and are not able to hire people because, but if you give them an amnesty, all of a sudden they are ca there's a significant capital injection of sorts so that they are able now to hire people and restart their businesses but if they have to use their capital to pay gra uh, all these tax liabilities you have a big problem um, so you look at that, those reforms the move to the flat tax system making our tax system very transparent um, a lot of businesses and i've talked to many have so many challenges with the tax system. I believe that the Buy Ghana First policy, which I'm going to back up with law, is also a major avenue for job creation. Because at the moment, the default setting, given our Public Procurement Act, 
practically tends to go to import whatever you, you need to buy as government because the local firms are not able to be price competitive so at the foreign firms win the bids almost all the time so i want us to factor in the cost of unemployment in the bidding processes to say look if you give it to the foreign firms you are creating unemployment so how do we bring the jobs to our people bring a law and then at least you you have to uh, buy ghana first and then we we get more jobs to our people so i think that is then that you look at the whole issue of the cost of power power is very expensive for our businesses and i want us to move towards solar and bring in um, 2000 megawatts of solar power and reduce that then i want to bring in the credit scoring system you know our the demand for goods and um, for um, so many services is much lower if you don't have access to credit in your economy right but if you have access to credit uh, you look at the u.s consumer demand drives gdp over 60 percent of gdp because people have access to credit and they can buy goods and that when people buy goods it means you need to employ people to manufacture those goods so there is a direct link between the credit system and jobs so i believe that when we open up the credit scoring system we open up the job market uh, for our people uh, and you'll be able to create more jobs because you look at the mortgage market as i was saying the mortgage market in the u.s is 12 3 trillion it's almost 600,000 times our mortgage market now you no modern country and i don't know of any i've looked at it has developed without a mortgage market because the value of your land is dead if you don't have a mortgage market in the, the advanced countries they they unleash the capital out of the land in the economics you say land labor capital and entrepreneurship in ghana land is out but that's our most valuable asset so if you don't digitalize and get the land titling right so that banks can be confident that when they lend on the basis of a particular land that it be, actually does belong to you right so if we don't solve that problem of of ownership of land people will have to use land guards and then they, they finish they don't have title most businesses are started by mortgaging their properties most businesses out there but here the room to do that is foreclosed it's completely foreclosed so i want us to go back and tackle the fundamental problem deal with the issue of land titling and complete that process to allow then you can have a housing market develop the housing market is the most important market in any economy if more housing market goes down the economy collapses right so if we don't tackle the the, the housing market issue of mortgages the land titling issue we have a lot of dead capital stuck in the ground a lot of people have houses they live in them for 30 years but they don't have title to the house they don't have title they could have mortgaged this house and gotten capital to start a business but they don't have title so they will not proceed in in, in the, it will just be dead capital when they die the children will live there they cannot do anything with it even selling it becomes a problem so if we don't develop our housing market we are not going to to develop you know so I, I, these are some of the things i believe that we need to do i mean you raise another point about skills like people are trained one million you know and all of that that is very very important point but where do you start in building digital talent as a country we starting we have from the ground zero we want to enter the digital age you cannot without digital talent otherwise you'll be importing it all the time 
So you need to grow your digital talent. So you, you have to bring in skills. And the only way you can begin to grow your digital talent is to train your people. And if you are training a million people, um, maybe not all the million will get jobs in Ghana, but you can sit in Ghana and do a lot of uh, business process outsourcing abroad. You can work in the UK, US, right from here. It doesn't have to be a, jo a job in Ghana. But if you don't have those skills, you don't have the opportunities for you won't you won't be able to start so for every country and i've told other countries of i mean colleagues in other countries that look africa should build its digital talent otherwise we will continue to import i have made sure uh, right from the beginning that all our digitalization projects are done by local talent all of them and it has been a matter of policy that we grow the talent here, we make our mistakes here, we learn, and then the next time we'll do better. So if you look at everything we have done, virtually everything, it has been by local talent. Even the drones that we brought in, all the drone centers are 100% manned by Ghanaians, not a single foreigner. We insisted on it, 100% percent all the drone centers are being manned by Ghanaians. not a single foreigner is doing that because otherwise we will just be bringing people in to make money and then we don't get the skills but today people are coming to hire Ghanaians. recently someone was taken to san francisco to train drone flight <laughs> operators because we have the most experience we are the world's largest uh, drone um, delivery service so I think that yes you know you have to start from somewhere you have to build the talent you know and then you can, can, can otherwise but then you don't have any ticket for entry into the game you are, you are, you'll be stuck out and others will come and, and do it for you so I want to give Ghana a chance uh, to grow our industry yeah <laughs>